Hello everybody, so for today's video we are, as you can tell, in the cubicle house. So it is very close to the middle of October and so far we have had a favourable autumn with regards to weather conditions. As everybody knows we had a massive drought all summer, no grass for like two months. Um, but September the rains came and we now have plenty, well I won't say plenty, we have grass coming back which is good for the you know the tail end of the grazing season so cows are still out grazing day and night but they are on buffer feed we are still feeding silage at the uh, the feed barrier there isn't quite enough grass to to keep them going or to keep them fully fed but we've got a lot of fresh calvers and september october grass isn't good enough for fresh calved cows so they need a bit of silage uh, you know, just for, to keep them right, because you can uh, get all kinds of bother if you don't look after the fresh cows. So that's why they're still having silage. But up to now, they are grazing night and day. Um, but it's getting towards the time, the year now, where we're going to keep them in overnight. They still go out in the day as long as it's practical. But nighttime housing, um, just to kind of eke out the grass keep them close to the yard and you know it's gonna start raining fairly soon so the weather guessers tell us so we are in the cubicle house we are bedding down or dad is bedding down um, onto the mattresses onto the beds and you may remember last year uh, we were on hammer milled oilseed rape straw um, so this year we couldn't get rape straw so we are trying hammer milled wheat straw Okay, so here is our finished pile. As you can see, it stacks up very high indeed. So, the reason for wheat straw this year over rape, uh, like I said earlier on, we had an agreement with our neighbour. He was growing rape, um, and he said if straw at harvest time was fit to bale, we could bale some. But um, when it came to harvest, the seed was fit ready to cut, but the straw or the oilseed rape stalks were still very green. Um, there was thunder threatened, so he wanted his crop cut for risk of shatter. You know, with the pods on the oilseed rape can shatter and he would lose his seed, so he cut it. When the seed was ripe, the straw was green, um, and it, he just chopped the straw. There was no straw available for baling this year. So, we had plenty of wheat straw, and what we've actually milled is our own spring wheat straw. What you saw going through the mill and what is in this pile is all home produced. So that's very nice. Low, what's the word? It's not food mills, is it? Anyway, not very much transportation involved in getting this here. So that's nice to grow our own bed in. So the same as earlier this year, when we milled the rape straw, this is gone through a three millimeter screen in the hammer mill. We were doing this, it's the big 
Look, you saw the big bales, four foot by three foot, and that was going through the machine at a rate of about eight or nine bales per hour. So not massively fast, um, not as fast as rape straw, but an acceptable throughput for that machine. And we've got, again, a very fine, very soft, and hopefully very absorbent bedding material, which will go out onto the beds. Cows have had access to the, the bedded cubicles for a few evenings now. Um, like I said, you know, there's just free, they can come and go as they please, but some choose to stay in. And this seems to be working well. It's keeping dry. Um, it's not sticking when the cows come in the parlor. You know, this stuff doesn't hang off them. It, it falls off, stays on the beds. Um, my only slight concern with this is what's gonna happen in the slurry in the winter. Um, the oilseed rape milled the milled rape straw or the milled oilseed rape straw didn't cause us any issues at all we had a very very slight crust form on the tower but it mixed in easily it was no bother at all this is going to be i feel a bit lighter than oilseed rape straw and may well float and cause more of a crust i don't know we're just going to have to deal with it in the spring um, if it happens we'll deal with it if we need to it is proven good it is cost cost effective and uh Cows like it, we like it, it goes through our machine well, it gets a nice even coverage. So everybody's happy so far. Um, this heap, we're not entirely sure how many bales are in this heap, we kind of lost count. So we think there's around 20, 21 bales in this pile, but nobody was counting. And back in, back in January, we milled 14 bales of oilseed rape straw and two bales of bean straw and that lasted us about 10 weeks. As long as this gets us into January, gets us past Christmas, we can then get him back in again uh, to do another pile to get us through to turnout. So we're expecting kind of two piles a winter, which is still cost-effective bedding because we will have plenty of bales still in stock in January to see us through to turnout. So there we go, just a little quick one today, just to keep you updated what's happening. Um, I didn't get a great as much footage of the the mill as I wanted. He was in he was in he was in very early. The the actual driver arrived just gone seven o'clock in the morning. Um, I was still milking, but I did get some drone footage which you've seen. Um, I did try and get some GoPro footage as well, but the battery was flat on the camera despite being charged two days before. These cameras are a bit. You know, GoPros are not the best, but that's what we got. So anyway, so there we go. Didn't get as much footage as I was hoping, but you've got the gist of it.
So I will say thank you very much for watching and we'll see you next time.